Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. As always, you can contact us on our website at www.lanessafarms.com. You can send us an email at customerservice at lanessafarms.com or you can give me a call or send me a text at 219-869-7524. Again, that's Lanessa Farms. That's L-I-N-E-S-S-A-F-A-R-M-S dot -S -S com. Uh, these videos are made specifically for people just like you based off the questions and comments that we receive. So if you have questions, if you have comments, send them to us. We are ready for them and we will make a video based off the feedback that we received from you. As a matter of fact, this video, I just received an email five minutes ago and it was such a good question uh, that I had not considered before that has such a strong impact on our farm and what we do uh, that I, I told them, hey, I'm gonna answer it immediately. So uh, before we get started, remember, thumbs up, subscribe. If you're not giving us a thumbs up, please do. We really appreciate it and subscribe. Uh, we got lots of useful information here at lanessafarms.com and I think uh, it'll make you a better farmer all around, or at least I like to think so. Uh, if you don't follow us on Facebook, check us out at lanessafarms.com on Facebook as well. So long story short, got an email from Jody in central Illinois and Jody raises goats. They raise a couple different breeds of goats. They raise some Kikos, they raise some boars and want to know, just said, hey, we raise goats. Um, we need to know how much they should weigh, how soon they're gonna get to weight, what is the preferred weight and what's the best time of year to sell them. So here we go. Um, preferred weight for a goat to sell, to take to the sale barn or to sell to a customer, 60 to 80 pounds, cut and dry. You can sell them a little bit less, you can sell them a little bit more, but 60 to 80 pounds. Second question that I got from Jody was, how long does it take to get them there? Very good question. Um, so if you scroll down in our videos, you'll see that we, we talked about uh, creep gates. And the reason that we talked about creep gates is a creep setup is the best way to raise your sheep and your goats. I don't care what anybody tells you, giving supplemental grain when they are babies will give them a boost. And if you do not give them that boost, they will almost, they will catch up, but it will take a lot of time. So what in the holy heck am I talking about? I'm talking about giving supplemental grain to your babies when they're small, uh, to your kids and to your lambs. While they're nursing on mom, also giving them a free choice supplemental grain source of 16 to 20% that they can get to as much as they want all the time. And the, only re the only way to effectively do this is by setting up a creep gate and creep area. And again, we've, we've created videos about this for you to, to understand more of what I'm talking about. I get the feeling from Jody's email that what Jody does is Jody takes their animals and puts them out on pasture uh, and lets them forage, and that is fine. Um, however, it is going to take a substantially longer amount of time to get them up to weight, putting them on pasture, as opposed to putting them on creep until they're weaned and then putting them out on pasture. I can say this because I've done it both ways. I have taken lambs and I have uh, bypassed the creep uh, part of it and I've put them directly out on pasture and I have had other lambs that I've put on creep and then put out on pasture later. The lambs that were put on creep feed that higher percentage grain feed prior to going out to pasture for about 12 weeks prior to going out to pasture grew faster, taller, longer, heavier, way, way faster than the lambs that were put out on pasture. The lambs that were put on on pasture took almost a full year to catch up with, just to catch up and wait to those animals that had been given free choice creep. It is well worth the money, especially if you're going to be selling lambs or goats at market at 60 to 80 pounds. Um, if you have them on creep, if you have nice boar goats, kikos, uh, a nice wool sheep, and you are giving them free choice creep, you should expect to have them to that 60 to 80 pound mark in approximately four to five months. Our best feeding uh, lambs that we have here on the farm will gain over a pound a day when they're in full force, when they're in that like three month to, to five month window. They'll be putting on a pound a day with free choice creep. Um, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't expect that as well. However, if you were to put them out on pasture, you're not gonna see those results. Like there's just no way. They're not taking in the protein. They're not taking in the vitamins. Um, I have crunched the numbers. I've done this multiple times, I am telling you. 
uh, free choice creep is the way to go, especially if you want to sell at market price. The next big question is when is the best time of the year to sell them at market price? It depends on your geographical location, but I will say that the best time, generally speaking, to sell goats um, and lambs is during the feasts of the Islamic holidays throughout the year. There are two Eids. Um, Eid is basically the feast, uh, Eid al Badr and Eid al Adha. Uh, forgive me if I pronounce them incorrectly. One is the feast that follows Ramadan, one is the feast of the sacrifice. Um, the feast following Ramadan is known as the Lesser Eid. The feast uh, of the sacrifice is the Major Eid. One lasts three days, one lasts four days. And these are the times of the year that you're going to find that you sell the most of your lambs and your goats. Um, they, uh, the Islamic customers that we deal with, and we deal with a lot of Islamic customers, generally tend to buy from us going into these feast times, and we try to uh, have our animals ready for them at that time. Uh, intact males, uh, be cautious about castrating animals. Uh, talk with your Islamic customers. Many of them will not want them blemished or castrated, tagged, anything wrong with them. They need healthy, intact males or healthy females. Um, in my experience, uh, feast of the sacrifice, they want intact males uh, that are over 60 pounds. Um, the Islamic calendar uh, runs on a lunar calendar. It does not run on the typical Gregorian calendar that we know. And so what you're going to find is uh, Ramadan and Feast of the Sacrifice roll back about 11 to 12 days per year. So this year, for example, uh, Ramadan happened in very close coordination, uh, this is 2020, um, Ramadan happened in very close uh, coordination with the time of, of Greek Easter, and uh, Feast of the Sacrifice is happening this year, the last week of July, first week of August. Next year, those will both roll back about 12 days. So the normal uh, unaffected, unmedicated, unobtrusive way to breed goats January. Uh, you'll have to watch this because here in the next four or five years we're going to be seeing that they're going to need 60, 70, 80 pound lambs and goats in like February, March time frame and that's not going to happen unless you're considering other alternatives like uh, suppositories uh, and other things to cause these animals to go into heat earlier, go into estrus and have babies earlier. So hopefully this helps to answer some of your questions. I think I'm going to do some follow-up videos on this as well, talking about how to uh, coordinate and cause animals to go into estrus earlier, to have babies at a certain time. But if you are a lamb producer, if you are a goat producer, um, make sure that you look at who your primary customer base is and make sure you look at when these people are going to be wanting and have a demand for the meat that you're producing. As far as Islamic customers are concerned, you have the two Eids. As far as your Greek and other customers are concerned, it will be around Easter time or Greek Easter time. Um, and so pay attention to that. That should tell you when you want to breed, when you want to be planning on having babies. The other question that I got from Jody was in regards to the taste of the meat. Um, the older the animal tastes, the nastier the meat tastes. Uh, that's, that's basically in a nutshell the best way to look at it. The younger the animals are, the better, the sweeter, uh, the less gamey, uh, if you will, the gamey flavor is going to be there. Once animals start to get north of a year old, they'll start to get a little bit of a, of a funky taste to them. Once they get over two years old, we get into, as far as lamb is concerned, we get into that mutton stage where you do, in fact, get quite a bit of gamey uh, flavor to the meat. Uh, you may be stinking up the house when you cook it. Uh, so most people that I find, myself included, if I'm gonna eat a lamb or eat a goat, I wanna do it when they're in that uh, less than one year uh, age range. So hopefully this video is helpful for you. Uh, again, thank you very much for the questions, comments, concerns, very much appreciated. We look forward to talking to you next time.